God made man in the sixth day of the creation, fashioning him in his own image. He took some dust from the ground and formed a perfect body, a man's body. Then he blew into the man's nose and Adam came to life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This verse explains that human body and soul are made after God's image, which may refer to man's reason, free will, self-consciousness, and so on. But it is, secondly, in God's likeness, which implies something closer and more inward. It refers to man's moral powers, and especially to his capacity of attaining unto holiness. The man did not lose neither of these two, but both were weakened and defiled by the fall. However, in the man Jesus Christ, both were perfect and were fully attained throughout his existence, and he served as an example and an ideal of how a man who follows the law of God should be like. On the other hand, Adam was unable to attain his holiness and suffered great consequences because of that. The same thing applies to us. Having free will leaves us to decide if we are going to take the path of holiness or the path to destruction. Let them have dominion. The plural here addresses the human race generally. This too agrees with the whole bearing of the first chapter, which deals in a large general way with genera and species, and not with individuals. This is important as an additional proof that God's likeness and image belong to the whole human species and could not therefore have been lost by the fall.